Hi, I'm Ray Ridley of Ridley Engineering and welcome to this video series on frequency response analysis. In this first part of the video series we're going to talk about the measurement problem for switching power supplies. Now, if you're thinking about frequency response analysis, there's really only one reason that you would be doing that, because there's really only one industry that needs to do it on a regular basis. And you'll be making frequency response analysis measurements if you have noisy switching power supplies and you want to see the stability of your system. Now, if you have a frequency response analyzer, you may find it many other uses for it, including measuring capacitors, inductors, output impedance, and other transfer functions. But basically, the main reason to use it is because you need the stability of your switching power supply. So first, we're going to take a look at why switching power supplies present such a measurement problem to us, and why we can't do the measurements and stability analysis in the time domain. So here we have a typical switching power supply. You can see on the input the capacitors, the power switch, control chip, Here's a flyback transformer wound by one of our four-day workshop attendees, output capacitors. We're now going to apply 60 volts to the input, and we're going to take a look at what's coming on the output of the power supply. So let me hook up my scope probe here, so that we can see what I mean when we say a noisy switching power supply. There you go, scope probe is in place. And now let's go and look at the waveforms. Right now what we're looking at on the oscilloscope is the output voltage of a power supply and the scale right here you can see is 50 milliseconds per division and 100 millivolts per division. And as you see from the traces here we've got lots of things going on all at the same time. Along the top of the trace here you can see a 10 hertz modulation envelope which is something we're going to have to measure and this is the bigger of two signals that will be measured. The other will be down at one millivolt or less. We'll see that later. And when I turn the time base in here, remember this is 50 milliseconds per division right now. Let's expand this out. Now we can see the switching frequency. And here we have the classic switching waveform of a flyback converter with a kind of square wave going on there. That is now at 5 microseconds per division. This is a 100 kilohertz power supply. But we can see there's still spikes that haven't been resolved at this time base. So let's turn the time base a little bit further. And now we go to 200 nanoseconds per division. And there if we do a single shot capture, we can see the noise that exists at 200 nanoseconds and that's probably about 20 megahertz noise or more which is going up to 400 millivolts. All of this noise will be sampled by whichever instrument that you're using and uh, it doesn't matter what kind of digital processor you have, how many bits it has, if you don't do good analog processing first you will never be able to differentiate your signal from your noise on a switching power supply. So now we've seen from our switching waveforms why we have a tremendous noise problem with switching power supplies and why we can't try to stabilize an unstable system in the time domain. So what we have to do is go to frequency response analysis to try and make sense of the situation. When we go to frequency response analysis and control theory, we do something very important. We look at just one frequency at a time. Thanks for watching this video introducing uh, frequency response analysis. In our next video, we'll look at the measurement frequency ranges of a frequency response analyzer and the kind of frequencies you have to look at in order to characterize your entire power system. If you're interested in more information on switching power supplies, including control theory and frequency response analysis, please go see our design center at ridleyengineering.com. Thank you for watching.